So we're going to begin by creating a flipping ticker this time. And this is a little bit different from what we learned before because a flipping ticker actually involves transition logic and doing it just like a traditional transition logic scene. So I'm going to go ahead and open my scene that I have been working in, in my ticker BG. And we're going to go ahead and start adding to this scene so that we can now have a flipping ticker in here as well. So I'm going to start by adding a new group here. And let's just call this something like uh, time group to keep it simple again. Again, if you want to follow the whole conventions that we've been doing earlier, I'm going to call this one design, just so we know that we keep all of our design elements within that particular container there. Again, we'll just use a rectangle, keep it somewhat simple. And if I just want to turn on my color wheels again and just use the rectangle color to do that as well, we can. We could also adjust the height and the width in here as well. So I'll just slide this down here. Just to measure this up, and let's just try to make it a little bit uh, nice in the design here. So I'm just going to put it somewhere like that. Okay, and then I need to figure out a way to get this on. So I'm just going to animate this. So what we'll do is just have it be here on the left at 30. So I'm going to go ahead and set a keyframe. I'm going to rewind my timeline. I'm going to move the position out over there. Now I have an animation on here, so I'm going to go ahead and click this to go into the stage. Again, since it is transition logic, we're setting this up just like a traditional background scene. I'm going to go ahead and add a new director here. This director, I'm going to call time. I'm going to take my rectangle animation. I'm going to slide it in here. Again, we need some stop points. So I'm going to highlight my director, add a stop point at zero. My first stop point, I'm going to call O. And then my second stop point here, again, I can really call it anything. I'm going to keep it simple. How about we just call it A? So since this is a transition logic and it acts just like a transition logic, that means we need another group here, a toggle group. And this toggle group needs to be called the exact same thing as our director. So I'm going to go ahead and change the name of my group here to time. I'm going to go into my built-ins into our plugins folder into the container. I'm going to take the toggle. I'm going to slide it down onto my time group. I'm going to hit default keyframes. We get an animation there. It means everything looks good. And if we go into stage, we should have our AX, AO, BX, BO containers all set up there. All right, so that's the first start. I'm going to just go ahead and select all my directors, run it. And I just wanted to do that to take a snapshot. And this is the way that I do transition logic. I take a snapshot of the background and design my call up scene around that. So let's just call this snap one. It's in my folder. I got everything set up here. So I'm just going to save my ticker BG scene. And that means since it is transition logic, what we need to do is create a call up scene. I'm going to go back into my S tab, my server. I'm going to create a new scene. Let's call this time. I'm going to open up my time scene. First thing that I want to do is just grab that snapshot that I took. So here's snap one. And I'm going to add a little text group on here. So I'm going to start by adding a group. And let's just go grab a font. We'll slide this down too. And let's align it. So I'm going to go ahead and move my font down, scale it. And since it is time, I'm going to use a little plugin here in the tools folder called system time. Drag that down. Now I have an HMS. I don't want that. So I just want uh, hours or regular hours. So I'll just do a small case I and minutes here. So if we want to add a material on it, we can just to see it a little bit better. I'll go ahead and do that. Change it to texture. Definitely want to make sure that your Z position is up one or two so it doesn't interfere with the background. Whatever size you need to make it, you can. I'm just going to keep it as is right here like that for now. Last thing that we'll need is a control object. We don't really need to change this time here. So what I need to do is just go into my control and drag an object down onto here. Since this is transition logic, we're going to go into the control object plugin and turn on transition logic. Now here, we need to fill out our layer identifier, our state identifier, and our background scene. Our background scene, we know that's pretty easy because we have it right here. It's called ticker BG. So let's go ahead and fill that in. And again, naming convention is very important here. Our layer director refers to our director. 
So if you remember, we called that time, and then our state identifier was A. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, and we're going to go ahead and add an additional element before we start testing this. So I'm going to go back into my ticker BG and add one more box here or something. So let's go ahead and add another flipping ticker here, and let's call this one extra. Let's go ahead and call this extra group. And again, same thing, maybe I have a pre-made object here. I'll just slide this down, position it over. And it's a little bit tall, so I'll just use the scaling here to readjust it. All right, so I have that now. And I want to set an animation so that this will come on. So right at 30, here let's say this is where I want it to land. So I'll set a keyframe at 30, I'll rewind my timeline. It's gonna come in from the right side again. And I'm just gonna hit set keyframe. Now notice this time I didn't throw it into a group. So if you want to do that, you can. Again, I can just throw another group down here, design. Now whoever comes in here and opens up the scene knows exactly where our little design element is. And they don't have to spend time looking for it. So let's just close that off and just click on our animation here and go into the stage. Again, I need to add a brand new director. And we're going to go ahead and rename this director. Let's call it extra. I want to grab my animation and slide it into that director. So if you click on your little animation here, it will highlight that animation. So I can just drag it down into my extra folder here. Again, we need to make stop points. So go ahead and highlight the director. First stop point I'm going to call here is just going to be O for out. And our second stop point that we want to make, again, we can call it anything. I'm just going to keep it simple again and call it A. Now since it is transition logic, we need to add another group into here and this is going to be our toggle group which needs to equal the exact same name as our director. So I'm going to go ahead and make that one extra. I'm going to go into my built-ins, go into our container and drag the toggle down and I'm going to go ahead and click on my toggle to go into the editor. I'm going to click default keyframes. Once we click that, we get an animation on that extra container. It also gives us the AX, AO, BX, BO container, so everything looks pretty good there. Now we're going to save this, and if you want to take a snapshot again, just for placement reasons, we can do that. So let's go into our server, my I tab, take a snapshot, and we'll call this a snap2. And again, just make sure that you save your scene here. So we're going to go back into our scene, and we're going to create a new call up scene. So I'm going to right click and say create new scene. This time it's going to be our extra call up scene. So I'll go ahead and double click that and open it up. First thing that I'll do is grab my snapshot, slide it in there so that we have some placement. I'm going to add a group here. Also going to add a font. So I'm just going to drag my font down here. First thing, I want to make sure my Z position is set in front of that background. I'm also just going to slide my font down a little bit and scale it down just to see the size of it. So it looks okay. So if we want to type in anything here just to let us know, let's say this is extra news. If we want to take it a step further, add any type of plugin on it. For instance, if we only want it to be a certain size, we can add this max size plugin on it. And when I do that, it kind of resizes it. So I'm just going to go into the max size plugin, scale it down to 0.6. I'm going to readjust my max width. So it's a crapshoot. I'm just going to type in a random number of 300 here. You can see that it affected a little bit. It spread this out so that when I come back into my text and I type extra letters here, it's just going to keep it at that size. All right, everything looks good from that end. I'm going to go into my control plugins again so that I can control this. I'm going to add a control text to this one. Field identifier is number one. It looks okay. Our object group, we need to turn on our transition logic. So I'm going to turn on that button. Now our background scene again is called ticker BG. Our layer identifier refers to the director which is extra. Our state identifier refers to the stop point, which is A. So before I save this, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that snapshot off. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. 
Now, last thing that I want to check here, and it's very important with a ticker wizard or ticker client, is that in a flipping ticker and in our transition logic scenes, our object here must have a description. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm just going to call this the extra news here. We'll hit save. So now I just want to go back and double check my time scene here. And not only do I want to turn off my background, but I'm also just going to double check and make sure that I have a description in my control object, which I do not. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this time group or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So now we just need to jump over to ticker wizard and load up our flipping tickers and then play them out through ticker 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and put my artist on air and open up template wizard. I'm going to go ahead and rescan. And now that we rescan, what well, we do have an option here for our create flipping carousels. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and see we have two new options here. So first I'm going to click on time. I'm going to hit next. This time it's a little bit different. It gives us the actual scene. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that scene. It says importing templates everything looks good so I'm gonna hit next and then finish and I still have one more to create here in the create flipping carousel so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this box and now we have the extra option I'm gonna go ahead and click on the extra I'm gonna hit next I'm gonna find my extra call up scene double click it and hit next and then finish so now it's, we're at the point where we can take this back into ticker client. We're going to jump over to viz ticker client. Okay, so once in ticker client, now you can see that we have two additional tabs here. We have a time and we have an extra. We also have our other ones that we created before. We have a main and a side. So the process is the same. Again, I'm going to click on the time. I'm just going to create a new carousel. And since we don't really have any control object or control plugin controlling anything, we can just hit save and slide this over. We can also go into our extra tab and now we can actually create some one-offs here. So we have an extra news. I'm just going to save that. We'll add one more group here. So we can just say something like today, for instance. We'll save that one as well. I'm going to go back into my main control. Let's slide this a little bit up so that we'll be able to see again. And in our main control, we have our ticker system main, program main, main one, side one, time main, extra main. And we have buttons for all of these. So we'll be able to control these independently within our ticker here. So I bring on my program main. And it brings on our two tickers. Now I want to try my time. So I'm going to bring this on. And see that came on. And now we're going to bring on our extra news. So you can bring that on. And we can take that off and we can take this off independently. Now we have two containers in here. So you see that when you bring our extra main on, so when we have two pieces of information like this, it just kind of transitions between the two. So at any point, uh, you can just jump back into your artist program, tweak any changes that you could possibly make. So this really concludes the design process for Visitor T Ticker 3D. So you have a couple of different options of ways to design your ticker.